Well, hey guys, welcome to this video. So over the last several weeks and the kind of winding down with the end of deer season, a lot of you have asked, you know, wh what is my actual setup for saddle hunting? Um, saddle hunting, I kind of uh, kind of got introduced to that probably about a year and a half or two years ago. I started watching, uh, uh, as many of you are, if you're watching this right now, you're watching it on YouTube. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube as well, and uh, I really enjoy watching the hunting public. And those guys really turned me on to saddle hunting. Um, so I've really gotten into it really for the last season and a half. And what I thought I'd do today is kind of go through my setup that I use for saddle hunting and some changes that I've made going into this coming deer season for the falls of 2021. But before I do that, guys, just remember, if you would please click the subscribe button. Uh, we appreciate all your support here uh, at Wild Bow Hunting at our YouTube channel. We continue to grow and it's only because of all of your support. And don't forget to head over to the Wild Bow Hunting website. We've got uh, a limited amount of apparel that we're trying to uh, uh, close out and uh, all your purchases really help to fund our channel, allow us to continue to bring you videos, tips, and whatnot throughout the season. So without any further ado, let's get right in to my tree saddle setup. Okay, so the whole theory behind me wanting to get into saddle hunting is, you know, as, as I get more involved into hunting on public land and uh, even being mobile when you get into that rut, you want to be able to go in as light as you possibly can. And don't get me wrong, tree stands are great, whether it's a climbing tree stand, whether it's a hang-on set. Uh, I've used muddy hang-on sets. I've used lone wolf hang-on sets. I still use them today. What we do is we may go out and we'll put some sets up that are permanent that we can move and we'll put a couple of them up so it allows us to be mobile on our own private land but when you're hunting public land sometimes you got to get back in there a little bit deeper um, you're putting a lot of you know miles underneath your feet just to find where the deer are at get away from people if that's something that you enjoy doing and you want to be as light as you can possibly going in because hopefully you're going to be a lot heavier coming out so that's why i really got turned on to saddle hunting by watching uh, you know what people are doing on the YouTube channel you know hunting public I mentioned that in the intro there uh, Catman Outdoors Hush um, you know and I really did a lot of research on saddles and what I'm about to share with you in this video is not the end all when it comes to saddle hunting there's a lot of great uh, social media uh, pages and sites out there that you can get involved in. Um, there's one that I follow a lot. It's called Saddle Hunter Nation on Facebook. Check it out. A lot of great tips and uh, pointers from people who do saddle hunting. Um, and the gear that I use is obviously not something that maybe you're going to want to use. This is what I've chosen from my research, from what I've seen, and what I prefer. So I went with Tethered for my saddle setup. And uh, as far as my steps are concerned that I use, uh, I've gone with the Hawk Helium steps. And I'm going to go through that whole setup here. We're going to get it on a tree and show you what it looks like. But let's take a look at this is what I take into the woods here when I go archery hunting or even rifle hunting. And that's the key about it. So I'll start with the pack that I'm using. So this is an Insights Element pack. Uh, you've seen me use this over the years. I really enjoy it. It's a small pack, but you can put a lot of gear into it. So what I've done on this pack is I've affixed the platform that Tethered sells. It's called the Predator Platform, and they've now got a a wider, bigger version of this. This is the original, okay? I believe it's about maybe a 12 by 12 platform, um, but I've got that fixed onto the front here, and then it, it, you can put your steps right onto this, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. But in my pack, basically, um, I've got everything that I need to go in to do my hunt. No matter where it is that I'm going, I can throw this on my back and whatnot. Uh, in the big pocket here, is where I will keep my camera arm. Uh, I use fourth arrow and I'm and this is actually a great arm and I'm gonna be using this a lot this coming fall, but I am going to a new camera arm that fourth arrow uh, made specifically for people who are mobile and especially the saddle hunters. So as soon as I get that, I'll be sharing that with you. Um, they also upgraded their their base or their shoulder to be a little bit more compact. And so I did purchase that 
um, which is great because uh, the other ones are awesome and I'm still going to use them as well. But you know, when I'm trying to be mobile, light, and uh, as little gear as possible, I want something like this. And Fourth Arrow continues to do uh, amazing things. So check them out if you're one that likes to sell film. Um, I'll probably have a deer drag in here as well. Um, hopefully drag that deer out, okay? Another thing that Tethered came out with this past season, it's called the Nushin, okay? Yes, you heard it right, the Nushin, K-N-U-S-H-I-N. And the idea behind this is this wraps around the tree, um, and when you're in there for a prolonged period of time, you wanna be able to sit down. And the way you would do that is you'd, you know, you'd lower, you'd let up on your mechanical Prusik or your Prusik, give you a little bit more length so you can kind of slide down into that saddle and then put your knees up against the tree. Now, if you're not one who likes to wear knee pads, a lot of people like to wear knee pads. I personally don't. They dig into the back of my, my knees. This is a great alternative. It's really light, weighs nothing, ounces really, fits perfect in your pack. When you get to the tree, you strap it around there. You've got a nice cushion, nushin. <laughs> to go up against and put your knees up against when you're, you know, hanging out, sitting for a while, putting in those long sits, you know, during the, the rut and the prime time of the, of the season. So that's pretty much what I put in my pack. Um, the saddle setup right here, this is the Mantis saddle that I use. And I, I got this, uh, like I said, last uh, in this fall of 2019, um, I, you know, I ordered it and it came, you know, they were so busy and backed up on orders. I didn't get it till probably, you know, the later part of the season, got to do about six or seven hunts out of it and was great. Um, but uh, this is the saddle that I use. Now they've already come out with a new one for this past year called the Phantom. Excited to see what they do for 2021 here. Um, and then this is my setup with sticks and this is the Hawk Heliums. They're 20 inch steps. Um, as a pack, they come with four and I started using them with four. Um, the weight's a little bit on the heavy side, uh, but I still really like them because they can stack like this. They're compact, they're not really big and I can still get up in that tree. What I did part way through the season this past year was I dropped it down to three steps. I was still able to get up about 15 feet in a tree with this setup. Um, but it just made my, my pack in and out a lot lighter. Um, what, I, what I added, and I'll show you, is I changed from, out of the straps that came with these, and I went with uh, an Amsteel daisy chain, and I've also added two Amsteel uh, climbing aiders. So on the bottom step, the first step that I will put on the tree, I'm going to put, I have a, uh, a two-step climbing aider on here. And then on the second step that I would go up the tree with, I have a single step. So with those climbing aiders uh, on here, it makes my setup a lot lighter. Everything I need is right here, affixed to the climbing steps already. Um, I don't have to, like I was doing in the early part of the year, is I'd bring the straps with me and I'd have to pull the strap out, put it on. You know, it was just more cumbersome, more stuff to carry. Everything is right here on it. And I'll be able to get up in a tree 20 feet if I want to and uh, be higher up off that ground. Even though I was able to kill a deer this past fall, or this past fall, um, only about 15 feet off the ground, never really saw me. And that's the nice thing I like about saddle hunting is you can hide behind that tree if you know where those deer are coming from and just kind of turn away and use that tree as a way to hide from that deer and then get yourself ready to draw that bow or get that gun up if you're a gun hunter, saddle hunting and get that shot off. One more thing I wanted to share with you really quick, um, and you may have seen this if you watched any of our videos that, uh, of the late season, when I was out in late archery season after the holidays, is I use these ties. You can get these on Amazon. They're really easy. They come in all kinds of different sizes. I'm gonna show you another way to use them in, when I get over to the tree. But you saw that I put these on my pack and uh, you know, when you're going in, it's colder late in the season. You know, I don't like to wear all my gear in, so I like to pack some gear in. But this isn't the biggest pack for packing all that stuff in, especially if I've got camera equipment in there. So what I'll do is I'll put these ties on there 
and they pretty much act as a, uh, a, a gear holder uh, for clothing, for extra clothing. And what I did was I fixed them on there, I threw clothing, kind of folded it, rolled it up inside, and held that on. And now I've got extra clothing on here, so when I find the tree that I want to climb, I can get dressed before I start climbing up. I'm not sweaty because I had all my gear on walking into the woods. So just another tip, check them out. They're on Amazon, they're really dirt cheap, and uh, you know, great little tip to help you get more gear in, carry a smaller pack, be as lightweight as you can, but not be sweaty in the late season with that layering system that maybe you like to do like I do. All right, so maybe you're wondering also, what does this whole setup look like when I'm walking in. Well, obviously I don't have my bow with me. That would be something that I'm carrying and I'd probably be carrying my camera so I could film on the way in. But aside from that, this is what my entire setup looks like. So you can see how I have this, the climbing steps secured onto the, the uh, pack that the Predator platform is in. Okay, so the carry case for the platform also has straps that you can put your climbing sticks on. And then you see how I have that fixed to my pack. My pack is secured, the weight is balanced because I've got the waist strap, chest strap right here. And if you notice, I'm wearing my saddle. And this is how I walk into the woods. Now some guys may like to pack it in, but I wear it in, okay, because that's less that I have to put into my pack and put on my back and it's right here and then once I get there I can put stuff on the tree and I'm ready to go. That's pretty much what the setup looks like. Okay so in the early part of the season this is really light there's nothing to it. As you get into the season you may add some more gear into the uh, your pack okay maybe you know I always take water with me so there's a little bit more weight with that but the idea is you're going to drink that so as you go in that'll be a little bit lighter coming out but for the most part this is what the setup is so let's now get over we'll put some stuff on the tree show you what the whole thing looks like all right so we came over to the tree what I did was I took my first step and I put that on the tree we're only going to go up this high for today but I wanted to kind of go through this show you what I mean by the setup now I don't have this set up as high as I would normally put it um, this is the one that has the two-step aider on it from Amsteel relatively inexpensive really easy to put on here go through the loop is specific for the the Hawk helium here this is extremely strong Amsteel cord it's not going to break uh, and the steps are perfect they're really lightweight so what I would do is I would set this up higher you got you see I got the daisy chain on it once you put weight on there that's not moving it's not going anywhere okay um, I would preferably like to have this step right here on the aider right about at my knee so I would put this up just a little bit higher that allows me to get up off of the platform uh, or off of the ground um, and I've got a good start. And now I've got two more steps, one with an aider and one without, that'll get me up this tree a little bit higher if that's something that I wanted to do. The other thing is, this is your predator platform. Getting it up on here, this thing is rock solid. Now people will look at this and they'll be wondering, this thing is small, how is it comfortable? I can assure you it is extremely comfortable to use and to stand in. You would not think something this small is enough room for you to be up on there to move around when these things lock in place you can pivot off of either side here there's grips on each side okay that your boots won't slip this thing does not turn um, there's a leveling system on it as well uh, but I want to show you two tips that I learned and these are things that that I saw by watching Tether's YouTube channel so if you're not sure about what to do or you want to try to modify some things or add some stuff that makes it easier for you, that's where I learned a lot of what I'm doing, not only from Tethered's YouTube channel, but again, any other YouTube channel where people do saddle hunting, or like I said, Saddle Hunter Nation on Facebook. So the two tips here that I kind of incorporated is again, you notice I have one of these ties. Now this is a small one, I think it's a, an eight or a 10 inch one, and I've affixed it around the, the top of the, riser here right where that would be and there's a reason for that and I'll tell you in just a second. The other thing I did was I got some bungee. You know you can get this at a Walmart, you can get this uh, on Amazon 50 feet of it at a time and I just cut about a six or an eight inch piece of bungee and uh, tied it off and put that through the loop of the strap for the tethered platform. This way when I wrap it around 
I can put that right on there. My strap's not flapping all over the place. It fits well in my tethered, in my Predator pack right there. And uh, it just, it's a neat, it's good for storage and whatnot. And it doesn't get in your way when you're trying to put this on a tree. With my saddle, there's a lot of stuff that I carry into this that I use. So that's less stuff in my pack. So with the saddle, you can purchase from Tether these, what they call cis haulers or cis pouches. It's store your stuff basically, all right? And uh, you know, I think they're great. So the one on the left, and I have them organized and you'll see Tether explain organization and that's where I learned how to put everything in here. It's key because you wanna have stuff accessible as you're taking it out, as you're climbing, as you're uh, ascending up the tree or descending down the tree. So the first thing is when I open this up, the first thing coming out is gonna be my lineman's rope with <clears throat> my D-ring and a mechanical Prusik on here, okay? That's what's gonna help me get up that tree safe. I can work hands-free, hang steps, hang my platform uh, as I'm ascending up of that tree. So that's the first thing in there. Once I'm up there, the next thing that I would pull out is gonna be <clears throat> my tether. And this is what's gonna go around the tree. Um, and this is what I'm gonna be hooking my saddle into to be able to maneuver around and hang off of and whatnot. So that's the first thing that goes into my cis hauler pouch right here. And it's the last thing that I pull out when I get up. So again, organization is key when you're doing anything like this with saddle hunting or anything like, you know, as far as that is concerned, you wanna be able to be organized with your pack, with your saddle, whatever it is you're storing. The other pouch over here, now, in, I've got, you'll see two little accessory pouches right here that are elastic and whatnot. So in this part, I'll have like a little wind checker, okay? So if I wanna be, you know, checking my wind, I've got that accessible where I need it. And I also keep my release right there as well, okay? So this way I know where everything is at. It's not getting lost in a pocket somewhere, like in my pack or whatever the case might be. The other thing on the other side of that, okay, You'll see there's another one of those little ties that wraps around uh, about 30 feet of paracord. Um, I believe it's like a nine millimeter or eight millimeter paracord that I picked up and purchased. This is my tow rope, okay? Really light, okay? Not big and bulky. And again, I can store that right in one of the side pouches of my cis, cis bag, cis hauler, whatever you want to call it here. Inside this bag, okay, I have a couple of things. So the first thing that I would pull out of this side once I get up into the tree is gonna be what they call a hiss strap. And I'm gonna show you what that's all about in just a second here. I'm just gonna set it down. All right, and then the other things that I'll store in there, okay, is I've got a bunch of different rings. And most of them are S beaners. Um, I've got a 75 pound, uh, two 75 pound S beaners. And then I've got a bunch of little accessory ones that are uh, for hanging like anything on the hiss strap once I'm up there. Um, and then this is a, also a hanger that uh, they sell that you can hang your bow on, but I did a little modification. I'll show you that in another video. Lastly, what I'll keep in here is my range finder. Okay, um, this way it's accessible. It's right at, you know, hands reach. I don't have to worry about losing anything um, like that. And then one other item that I do have in here is the tethered uh, lumbar support. So if you're doing an all day sit, this lumbar support is another part that attaches onto your D-ring that goes off of your tether, just like your waist strap does here. And this goes on. So now you've got some lumbar support so you can sit in there. You're not leaning back too far. So this is a nice all day sit thing. I don't use it all the time, but there are those all day sits that I need it. And that stores right in there. All of this stuff is really extremely lightweight. Doesn't weigh a lot. You don't really even know it's there. <clears throat> when I get on the tree, all right, so we're gonna get our lineman's belt. We're gonna go around that tree. I'm gonna hook myself on. Okay, 
Now, there's, a, there's, there's two reasons. Now, when you buy from Tethered, if you purchase the, you know, the lineman's belt and your Tether, they're going to come with a rope Prusik already, okay? And they're great. They work great. But I upgraded to the mechanical Prusik for one reason. It's a lot easier to adjust. Sometimes that rope, it really grabs tight. And if you can't, if you don't get weight off of it, it's really hard to adjust a, a rope Prusik. With something like this, I can be climbing, you know, if I'm going up the tree and it's really changing width and I'm finding that I'm way too far out, with a mechanical Prusik, I can just pull that rope up and I'm closer. If I need to let off a little bit, I just pull the little tag here. Boom, I can, I can move myself back. And again, when I'm up there in the tree with the tether itself, it's easy for me to adjust if I want to stand up, if I want to sit down, whatever the case may be. So that's why I upgraded to mechanical Prusik on my lineman's rope, as well as my tether once I'm affixed into the tree. So, back to the little tie, why that's on here. Once I get up into the tree, one of the things, and this is another tip that I saw from Tether that I, I really took advantage of and it's worked great for me, is you don't want to drop anything because the idea is as you're climbing, you're going up and you're going to stay up there. You don't want to have to come back to up and down, up and down. You want to be able to put everything on the tree as you're going up and stay up there and get ready to hunt. So once I get up, this is in my Predator pouch which is on the back of my element pack I would just reach over pull that out okay and then what I would do is I just take this and I'd wrap it around there that's not going anywhere so now I can take the bungee that I had onto the loop end of my predator platform and I can be hands-free adjust that for the width of the tree that it needs to be that's still hanging there, it's not going anywhere, okay? Put that around the tree. And, uh, and bring it around to where it needs to be. And still, all while it's fixed to my lineman's rope. Let's just show you really quick how easy it is to set up the platform. Just get that set where you need it. Pull that tight. Make sure you're secured. Okay, and again, you're gonna, just like a tree stand, you're gonna fold that platform base up and then put that down. Now, if it's not straight or level, you may wanna do it, but you can see it moves a little bit, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick it up, pull a little bit tighter, boom. That thing is solid, it's not going anywhere undo that and I'm good to go. Let me get this set up to show you what it looks like up here and I'll come right back. All right guys, so when I'm all set up, this is what the whole thing looks like, all right? Now, you remember I said about an, an S beaner here, 75 pound rated? This is your hiss strap. You got all these terry loops on here that you can hang gear from. If I wanted to, I could pull another one of the S beaners or something out hanging on here. I could hang a grunt call. If I wanted to hang my range finder from it, I could put it on there. Um, but I hang my pack now. Now I can hang it a little bit lower, but at least it's at hand's reach. I can get to everything that I want to. Sandwich, water, whatever it is I'm going to need, it's right there in the pack. Extra batteries for my camera. Um, I would normally have my camera arm right around here um, with the base set up there. So this way I can maneuver it around the tree. My bow would hang on the left side right here. Here's the nushin. So if I wanted to, I can just adjust up the stand. I can move around the tree. Okay, I can be over here. The nice thing is I can stand off the edge of this, okay? I can put it off any corner, just like so. All right, so if I needed to come around, deer's coming this way from behind me, I could stand off. That platform's not going to move. I could shoot, okay? I could swing around over to here. I could shoot, obviously. Obviously, when you're setting up, you want to have it set up. So if you're a right-handed shooter, you can swing left. You want to have your, your shooting lane where you think the deer are coming from. 
set up accordingly so you can shoot off of that side. But if you've got to shoot around to your offside, you can swing like this. That's not going anywhere. Now, another thing that you can do if you got to shoot directly behind you is just loosen up on your tether, turn around, and put this right into your shoulder and stand on this like you would a normal tree stand. You're not going to go anywhere. Now you can shoot off of this side here like this. Okay, you can shoot 360 degrees if a deer is coming from behind you unexpectedly as, as aside from where you're expecting that deer to come. But most of the time, you just turn, sit down into your saddle, and this is why that mechanical prusik is so nice. You can see how easy, if I want to, I just hold on to my tether, loosen that, I can sit down. My nushin's right there. So I've got a little bit of thing I can sit and relax, okay? If I wanted to, I could put the lumbar support on here and I could just lean back and I can go. Binoculars, I would be looking around, glassing. So you have the ability to sit. You don't have to stand the whole time. It's very comfortable. You want to be set up so if that you're, you're expecting your deer to come this direction, you can hide behind this tree like this. If they're coming off to this side, you just shift. If they're coming the way you're expecting them to there, you shift over to here. You can even sit shooting if you like to do that, okay? The nice thing is you have a lot of freedom to move. There's plenty of room on this platform, but like I said, Tethered has come out with a little bit bigger platform um, if you need a little bit more space. I, I like this one here. It's, it's plenty for me, able to carry all my gear. This is what it looks like. With the other two steps, I'd have the ability to get up to like almost 20 feet with this whole entire setup, and I'm good to go. I can sit here and relax all day long, not have to worry about anything. That's pretty much my saddle setup. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, put them in the comment below. I'll be happy to answer them as best I possibly can or direct you to where you can get that answer. Um, the last thing is, how do I get those other two steps up? You guys are probably wondering. I didn't show you that, but if you look, here, I've got two S hooks on the back of my saddle, okay? And what I have, took about an eight inch piece of bungee, secured it through, and I, I put a bungee on each one of the other two helium sticks. And what I do is I attach them onto there. So now this way, they're out of my way, they're behind me. So as I'm climbing and I need that next step, I just unhook it from my S hook, put it onto my tree, go up to the last one, unhook, boom. When I'm coming down, I just do the opposite. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you a little bit more insight into the benefits and the fun of hunting out of a tree saddle. Um, if you like to go deep back in, you don't want to pack a lot of gear, you want to go as light as you possibly can, give saddle hunting a try. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. It's not just for young folks. Um, if you've ever heard of John Eberhardt, he's pretty much, uh, the saddle hunting god, I guess you could say it, and uh, he's kind of like the Fred Bear of saddle hunting. He's been hunting out of a saddle his entire hunting career, and uh, he continues to do it today, and John's a lot older than I am, so check it out, guys. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed this little informational piece, um, and uh, let me know if you're gonna try saddle hunting this year, whether it's out of a tethered setup or one of the many various setups that are out there available for you to go out and have some fun, be as light as you can, and then come out heavy with that big buck. We'll see you guys next time.